The 1999 model year represents a milestone in the Saab heritage. Saab designers and engineers used feedback from customers and dealers around the world and evolved these recommendations into an outstanding new sports sedan. The result is the Saab 95, a vehicle many have identified as a world benchmark, a vehicle for others to measure against. Although this video presentation is intended to orient service technicians to the new outstanding 95, all members of the Saab dealership team would do well to view and understand the many features offered by this automotive achievement. Specifically, this presentation reviews the new central locking and anti-theft alarm systems for the 95. Once inside, the extravagant list of standard and available interior features and their operation will be covered. Then, the world-class chassis will be examined, including the totally independent front and rear suspension. The 95 also features an all-new trionic engine management system that includes electronic throttle. Finally, the extensive use of an on-vehicle data bus is presented. Realize that this video presentation is a first step in a comprehensive nationwide training program to introduce this vehicle to all Saab dealership personnel. Nine Five technology is evident everywhere, even in the palm of your hand. The key contains a transponder chip which is part of the starter immobilization function, which will be covered later in this presentation. Unlike the two-button remote on previous models, the 95 remote fob has three buttons, lock, unlock, and trunk. Furthermore, the remote and door lock cylinders are totally integrated into the central alarm system. Press the lock button. All doors lock, and the lights flash once, and the alarm siren chirps once. The lights and chirp Confirm the command with the alarm. When the unlock button is pressed, only the driver's door unlocks, and the lights flash two times, and the siren chirps twice. Press the unlock button a second time. When the trunk button is pressed, the trunk releases, the lights flash three times, and the siren chirps three times. These features are paralleled at the driver's door lock cylinder. Lock the car with a key in the driver's door. All doors lock, and the lights flash once, and the siren chirps once. When the key is used to unlock the driver's door, only the driver's door unlocks, and the lights flash two times, and the siren chirps twice. Unlock the car with a key in the driver's door a second time, and the other three doors unlock. Because the remote and driver door lock cylinder functions are complete and fully integrated into the central locking and alarm functions, there is no need for a lock cylinder on the 9-5 front passenger door. Many of the anti-theft alarm and central locking functions are programmable and adjustable with the Tech 2 scan tool. Before moving on, notice the remote release buttons for both the trunk and fuel filler door on the driver door trim panel. Moving into the interior of the 95, you can see that Saab designers and engineers listen to the voice of the customer here as well. While memory seat functions are familiar, the steering wheel can be adjusted up and down, as well as fore and aft. With the driver door closed, press the forward end of the central lock button on the center console. All doors will lock. Press the trailing edge of the button once to unlock just the driver's door. Press the rear of the button a second time, and all doors unlock. The variable intermittent wipers are controlled by a slide switch on the right-hand control stock. Moving the switch all the way down gives a short interval, about two seconds. All the way up provides a longer interval of about 15 seconds. After starting the vehicle, the Saab Information Display, or SID, displays test brake lights. After the brake pedal is pressed, the brake light message clears. As available on 900 models, using the plus and minus buttons will scroll through the various SID displays and functions. Notice that the day and date are now available. While the technique is the same, there is a host of new messages. 
including this one regarding the immobilizer system to cover the enhanced features found on the 9.5. The 9.5 also features all new dual zone climate control. Each side, driver and passenger, has individual temperature control as shown on the display panel. Fan speed and distribution are common for both zones. Most symbols are familiar, except for vent and floor. Also, you'll find that auto, econ, and the off buttons function as before as well. As with previous Saab ACC systems, if a customer would like the ACC system to start up with a specific fan speed and distribution, they can custom program ACC. Set the desired fan speed and distribution for startup, and then briefly press rear defrost and off at the same time to store this program. The display will blink briefly to confirm the setting is stored. To clear the user program, if the setting is no longer desired, Merely press auto and lower fan speed together until the display blinks. Realize that the 9.5 does offer additional extended user programming compared to previous Saab ACC systems. These functions are displayed at the SID. With the 9.5, you can program low temperature AC control, which prevents AC operation at lower temperatures to aid fuel economy. There's also speed dependent recirculation which closes the recirculation door at lower speeds to help prevent the intake of outside fumes. There's also automatic operation for the rear window defroster at lower temperatures. All of these modes are thoroughly covered in the owner's manual. But we'll review rear defroster automatic operation to provide an idea of this convenience. If the driver presses the rear defrost button for several seconds, the SID will display ACC auto defroster control the rear window defroster will automatically be switched on if the outside temperature is below 5 degrees Celsius, 41 degrees Fahrenheit. If the driver presses the rear defrost button for several seconds again, the SID will display the text ACC, Manual Defroster Control. This indicates that the rear window defroster must be manually switched on. This is the normal factory setting. When necessary, such as when the battery has gone dead, the ACC system calibration procedure is the same as that used on 900 models. Simultaneously press the auto and off buttons. The control panel identifies that calibration is occurring. Two high-end audio systems are used on US 95 models. 95S models feature a premium system which includes a Pioneer audio head and amplifier with seven speakers. 95 SE models are equipped with a Prestige system. The Prestige system features a Pioneer audio head, a Harman Kardon amplifier, and nine speakers, including subwoofers. While most of the controls on the audio head are familiar and operate as one might expect, the Seek Arrows have special functions for a variety of modes. While listening to the radio, Briefly touching either end of the seek arrows seeks up or down. If either end is held down, manual tuning is in effect and an M is displayed. If listening to a tape, briefly touching either end of the seek arrows searches for the next or previous song on the tape. If held down, the tape goes into fast forward or rewind. When using the dash CD player, briefly touching the seek arrows changes the track up or down. Holding down either arrow causes fast forward or rewind. If you press and hold the center, the disc is scanned and the first 10 seconds of each cut is played. When using the CD changer, briefly touching the seek arrows changes the track up or down. Hold down either arrow for track, fast forward or rewind. The center of the seek button offers a variety of scanning options. The 9.5 also features convenient steering wheel audio controls. There is volume plus and minus, as well as seek. The arrows function just like the audio control head. However, the center position functions are not available. The next button scrolls through the six presets in radio mode. For tapes, it changes playback direction. And for the CD changer, it selects the next disc. Next has no function for the CD player. 
the source button scrolls through the radio, tape, CD, and CD changer modes. All functions and capabilities of these outstanding audio systems are thoroughly covered in the owner's manual. When installed in a 9.5, the audio unit and the CD changer are electronically married to the car. Therefore, entering a security code as with previous Saab radios is not required. However, an unmarried audio head or CD changer will not function in a 9.5. Related to service, if an audio unit or a CD changer is to be swapped into another 9.5, it must first be divorced from the car or it cannot be married to another 9.5. Also, when a new audio unit or a CD changer is installed in a 9.5, it must be married to the 9.5. The marrying and divorcing process is easily performed with the Tech 2 scan tool. On a related note, realize that the 9.5 does not have an antenna mast or aerial. The antenna is actually part of the rear window defroster grid. The system does, however, require two new components. The antenna amplifier is in the right C-pillar. The antenna filter is in the left C-pillar, grounded to the body. While the 9.5 main instrument unit, or MIU, appears similar to the cluster in the 900, looks can be deceiving. For example, the door ajar indicator cleanly displays the status of each door. The gear indicator is also designed for clear, quick reads. When the night panel function is selected, only the first two-thirds, up to 85 miles per hour, of the speedometer has backlighting. All other gauges and lighting functions are off. Run the speedometer up above 85 miles per hour, and the rest of the speedometer lights up. The last third again goes off 10 seconds after the speed drops back down. You'll also notice on the 9.5 that the headlight and rear fog light controls are located together. Basic power mirror operation is what you might expect. However, the automatic functions are impressive. For example, the seat memory is integrated with both driver and passenger side mirror positions as well. And while it is necessary to hold down the button for seat position, it is not necessary for the memory mirror position. When in reverse, there's a special mirror function using the small button on the control pad for enhanced safety. The passenger side mirror automatically angles down and in for extra visibility. The interior lights, including the new under-dash floor courtesy lights, come on when the vehicle is unlocked with either the remote or by turning the key in the driver's door lock. The left-hand switch on the front light console controls the swiveling map light. When the right-hand switch is pressed to the forward position, the interior lights come on continuously regardless of door position with automatic shutdown after 20 minutes. In the middle position, the lights are controlled by the doors and fade out after the last door is closed or as soon as the ignition is turned on. Press the switch in at the rear and the overhead and under dash lights are off regardless of door position. However, the door courtesy lights still come on. The switches on the center light console offer individual control over the left and right side reading lamps for the rear seating. These lights function independently of the ignition switch. The 9.5 power sunroof operates differently than previous Saab models. The 9.5 switch moves in three directions and parallels operation of the power seat slide switches. When the center of the switch is pushed, it raises the rear of the sunroof to the ventilation position. When the switch is slid forward, the rear edge of the sunroof lowers. To close and lock the roof from the ventilation position, always push the switch forward. From the closed and locked position, slide the switch back briefly for a one-touch open function. This opens the sunroof approximately 85%. Hit the switch again, and the sunroof opens completely. When the switch is slid forward and held, the sunroof closes completely.
Also new on the 9.5 are the double sun visors. The main portion of the visor can be folded out to shade the side window, while the second portion, folded down, shades the front. The front 9.5 cup holder is also convenient. Merely push in to release and push back to fold it away. The 9.5 also features front and rear center armrests. The front armrest is adjustable and the rear cup holders retract. The 9.5 not only has front driver and passenger airbags, but side airbags as well. The side airbags are integrated into the driver and passenger side bolsters. The side airbags are triggered independently of front primary bags and each other. However, they are still controlled through a single SRS control module. Under the door trim panel is a moisture barrier, which acts as a seal on the door cavity. The moisture barrier is glued in place and may tear easily when opening up the door for internal service work. The impact sensor for the side airbag is inside the respective door. The sensor works by picking up a rapid increase in air pressure inside the door during a collision, not G-forces. It is essential that the moisture barrier be put back in place carefully. Any sloppy repair work here or improper aftermarket modifications such as a speaker setup could seriously compromise the designed function of the airbag. The 9.5 also features active head restraints. While they function as one might expect for comfort, during a rear impact, this simple and effective design is triggered by the seat occupant's back impacting the upper portion of the seat back. The 9.5 front seat belts automatically find the correct height for proper function and comfort when buckled. With front seat belt pretensioners, two front bags, two side bags, active head restraints, and Saab's most superior body structure ever, the 9.5 offers optimum driving safety. While rear door child locks have been a Saab feature for years, the 9.5 locks use a key to help ensure the locks stay in position. The 9.5 rear seating area offers generous features as well. These include rear seat headrests, a through-load hatch, heated bottom cushions, and foldable seats for extra utility. All of these features are thoroughly explained in your owner's manual, so study it carefully. Outstanding design and engineering are found throughout the 9.5. The chassis is no exception. Like the 9000, the 9.5 has a central rear lift point at the rear tow hook. This allows both rear wheels to be lifted with a single floor jack. The rear suspension is totally independent with gas-charged shocks and a sway bar. The combination rear spring shocks feature a bolt-on upper spring mount. Ride and handling control are assured with the upper and lower control arm design. The longitudinal link, also known as a trailing arm, at each rear wheel helps ensure the 9.5 tracks true even during extreme maneuvers. The front suspension is designed to match the rear for outstanding handling and response on the road. The 9.5 front suspension is similar to that on the 9000 and features a one-piece lower control arm with an easily replaceable ball joint. The isolated subframe not only provides structure but also smooths out road vibration before entering the passenger compartment. Note that the steering rack is mounted to the subframe. Although not part of the chassis, there are two service features worth noting while the vehicle is up in the air. The first is the air filter. With the 9.5, it drops straight down once released. Also, the fog light bulbs are easily accessible from behind the spoiler. The 9.5 is available with two engine choices, a four-cylinder light-pressure turbo, identified as the B235, and the B308 V6, also light-pressure turbocharged. Even though the B235 four-cylinder has the external appearance of the existing B234 engine, it has been totally redesigned to reduce fuel consumption, increase emission control efficiency, and minimize vibration at low engine RPM. 
Both the four- and six-cylinder engines use the new version T7 Saab Trionic engine management system. The Trionic system is responsible for control of fuel, ignition, and air management. Even though the T7 system is based on the Trionic system you've been familiar with since 1993, most of the components have been redesigned, and a few new ones have been added. The T7 engine control module, or ECM on the 95, is located in the false firewall area under the plastic cowl cover. Notice that the manifold absolute pressure, or MAP sensor, is redesigned and now screws directly into the intake manifold. The engine coolant temperature sensor, or ECT, is located at the rear end of the cylinder head. While the intake air temperature sensor, or IAT, is screwed into the metal portion of the intake pipe, as on previous systems, there is a new sensor called a charge air absolute pressure sensor, or CAAP. The CAAP sensor has a short hose connecting it to the intake pipe. This sensor identifies the pressure in the intake pipe ahead of the throttle plate for the ECM. The T7 system also utilizes a mass airflow sensor or MAF sensor. This is the first time a MAF sensor has been used on Trionic. Four-cylinder models use a component called the charge air control valve, which is similar in operation to the previous boost pressure control valve. Even though six-cylinder models are turbocharged as well, this valve is not used. One of the major new functions of the Trionic T7 is the electronic throttle. As the driver presses the accelerator pedal, a cable operates a pedal position sensor assembly located inside the throttle body. The ECM interprets this as the amount of engine torque requested. The ECM then performs a variety of calculations and precisely opens the throttle with an electric motor in the throttle housing. The ECM receives feedback from the throttle position sensor assembly regarding the position of the throttle butterfly. Although this system is similar to the traction control system seen previously on some 9000 models, only V6 models feature a traction control function. For safety reasons, a fault in the electronic throttle will cause the system to go into a limp home mode. After the cause of the limp home condition is repaired and diagnostic trouble codes are cleared, the throttle linkage must be manually reset. Details on this procedure are found in the service manual and are thoroughly discussed in 9-5 training sessions. A Saab 9.5 with all available options is comprised of 13 electronic control modules. 11 of these control modules are in constant communication with each other. The exceptions are the anti-lock brake system and the supplemental restraint system modules. Specifically, the 9.5 on-vehicle data bus can consist of the trionic engine control module, or ECM, the transmission control module, or TCM, the main instrument unit, or MIU, the Saab information display, or SID, the theft warning integrated central electronics, or TWICE module, the automatic climate control, or ACC module, the audio system main unit, the CD changer, the power seat memory, or PSM module, the power mirror memory, or PMM module, and the Dashboard Integrated Central Electronics, or DICE module. On the Saab 9.5, this communication takes place over two communication buses. The buses consist of a P bus, or a powertrain bus, and an I bus, or instrument bus. Both of these buses are connected to the MIU, and the MIU acts as a gateway allowing information on one bus to be shared with the other bus. The P-Bus consists of the ECM, the TCM, and the MIU acting as the gateway. The I-Bus includes the MIU, the DICE, which is responsible for control of most lighting circuits, cooling fan operation, intermittent windshield wiper operation, and contributes to other functions such as AC control, and the TWICE, which is responsible for central locking, anti-theft alarm, and the immobilizing function. The other modules are the SID, ACC control head, audio control head, 
and CD changer, as well as the PSM and PMM modules. While at first glance, the data bus seems very complicated, it actually allows more functions with less components. For example, since all of the control units can share data, there is only one engine coolant temperature sensor for the entire car monitored by the Trionic ECM. Trionic processes this information, then sends it out on the bus to all other control units. This actually decreases the number of sensors and the amount of wire needed. There is no more need for AC temp switches or multiple ECT sensors on the engine. The engine temperature gauge on the MIU operates using the temperature information it receives on the bus. A good example of data bus operation is the immobilizing function. Immobilizing is an anti-theft function which has been required in certain European markets for a couple of years. Now all 9.5 models throughout the world will have the immobilizer function as standard equipment. In order for a 9.5 to crank the engine and start, there are a couple of control units that need to receive information on the bus, telling them to turn the immobilizer off. As the driver turns the ignition key to the start position, the TWICE module is energized and powers up a receiver which surrounds the ignition key on the console. This unit receives a special digital code from a transponder chip located in the key and sends this digital code back to the TWICE module. If the TWICE module recognizes this code as the one that's programmed, the TWICE module grounds the starter relay, allowing the engine to crank. The TWICE module also sends out a command on the iBus to turn the immobilizer off. This information passes through the MIU onto the P-Bus, where the Trionic ECM receives this information and supplies fuel, allowing the engine to start. The Saab 95 is an outstanding sports sedan many have identified as a world benchmark, a vehicle for others to measure against. The 9.5 represents tremendous advancements in feature content and technology. Service technicians and all members of the Saab dealership team need to understand this fine automobile and all it offers to its owners. As was mentioned throughout this presentation, the owner's manual is a great place to start this process. Then, take all the available training with your dedicated attention. The car itself deserves it. Our valued customers deserve it. And each of you deserve to possess the mastery required to maintain your role as trusted and respected professionals.